From fashion to romance. Romance? I thought our guest was a singer. Yes, but he's Italian and he sings love songs and he's dreamy. And hey, he's waiting for you to interview him. So come on, get on with it. <laughs> he's considered an icon here in South Africa, most famous for his Italian cover of the Robbie Williams smash hit, Angels. Victor, welcome back to South Africa. Buonasera. Good evening in Italian. You see, now something like that. I, everybody thinks that French is the language of love. Now, for me, Italian trumps it. Who said that? Well, you know, there's some who people said who said that? that. Now, we had to bar any woman from the set uh, whilst mm. we're here this evening. Um, what's it like being an international icon and desired by women everywhere? Wow, I feel very flattered to hear that compliment from a guy. Probably because I'm a young guy and, and because I, I try to do um, look great when, when I'm on stage, it probably has an effect on the ladies. Your debut album came out in 2005, titled The Italian. That's right. Now, I'm aware that you recorded that at Abbey Road Studios, which That's are right. some of the most famous studios in the world. That's right. And you had the entire uh, Royal Philharmonic Orchestra That's as right. an accompaniment. Yes. Now, for a debut album, how do you get that right? Well, <laughs> hard work to get there because I had the problem that people think that Italian music is just classical music and they associate Italian singers just with opera. Um, I'm not at all, I have nothing to do with Bocelli or Pavarotti. I wanted to explain that songs like You Don't Have to Say Love Me, sang by Dusty Springfield or A Man Without Love, sang by Engelbert Humperdinck, are actually Italian songs. So I put these songs together and put sort of a Italian songbook together and that was a concept that, that I've done I think about 2003 but I knew that I had to find a producer who could finance an orchestra. It's, it's always difficult to find people who want to pre-finance uh, an album but I found a great team and we've done that. We recorded amazing 14 tracks and then went to find a record company who would believe in it and we found it. And I don't want to say the rest is history because history is... You're still making it. <laughs> well, I hope so, you know. I'm, I'm very happy that, that uh, I'm doing well so far. But I want to take you back a little bit further now yes, to the sure. young Patrizio. Now, what do you mean, the young Patrizio? The younger Patrizio, <laughs> forgive <Yes>. me. <laughs> That's all right. As a young boy growing up, when, how did uh, you develop this passion for music? And mm. how did you, when did you first get started? Well, my parents had a restaurant. And they used to play, uh, record the old vinyl records into cassettes to be later played in the restaurant. So when I was three, four years old, singing along to the records, and my parents would catch me several times going, hey, come here, sing a little bit. My father had that recording machine, and I would sing, he would record. But um, my parents, as much as they were supportive, they didn't believe that being a musician is a profession. So. At the end, they said, so what do you want to work in your life? <laughs> I said, I want to be a musician. No, that's not a job. You know, you got to learn a job that you wake up in the morning, come back in the evening. So I wanted to be a chef. My father wasn't happy about that because he was a chef. He said, no, you got to learn a job where you can, Exactly you know. so. My father was a chef and was I thought he? about doing it and he said, forget it. You need yeah. a different life. Did he so. tell you that like, things like, you got to find a job where you, when, 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 when people go out on Saturdays and Sundays to have a nice meal with their sweethearts, that you don't have to stay in the kitchen and, and work, <laughs> right? I was uh, um, brought up speaking many languages, living in Austria as well. Mm -hmm. So Italian, German, in school, English, French, Spanish, and later I studied Polish. So I became an interpreter. And, uh, but music was always there. Now, you're recording a lot of the, the old standards yeah. and you're recording them in the studio that they were originally recorded in. So yeah. what, what sort of a sense of history did you get from that? People call me the ambassador of the Italian songbook because I've taken those songs that, that traveled the world that are Italian songs and I explained, look, this and this song is actually an Italian song. But Patrizio is not just an Italian. That's my nationality, that's my culture, that's my tradition. But I'm an entertainer. So for this third album, I have continued to do that, that repertoire. Mm -hmm. And I recorded, for example, a song, an Italian song called Grande, 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 which became a big hit for Shirley Bessie, Never, Never, Never. Or Hey Mambo, Mambo Italiano. Then, adding to that some original material that I'm mostly proud of, 
because, for example, a lady like Diane Warren, who wrote Unbreak My Heart for Tony Braxton, has written a song for me called Why Did You Have To Be? And I've chosen some songs that are standards, that are known all over the world. I wanted to reinvent that entertainment, crooning genre and bring it back my way. You've just completed your South African tour. What kind of response did you get from the crowds? I think South Africa has an amazing temperament. The, the audience is just wonderful. In fact, uh, I've been uh, very much um, embraced by the Afrikaans um, population or audience, even singing in Afrikaans one song with a dear friend of mine, Steve Hofmeyer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a blessing. The people here give me so much respect, love. I think you're well on your way to achieving your dreams and pleasing the world's population. So all I can say is Forza. Yeah? Paya thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. thank you. After the break, we experience a day in the life of Rake Nierthling. <laughs>